Catherine McKinnell, MP, uh, Shadow Minister for Schools, is with us this morning for Labour. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining us. You want to talk about ch children's mental health services? So we know that there's a huge crisis in children's mental health. There are almost half a million children waiting to be seen, either for an initial assessment or waiting for treatment. And Labour sees this as a key priority for us if we are fortunate to form a government. And we want to make sure that every secondary school has a mental health specialist so that young people can get mental health support early, they can get intervention, they can be referred to the relevant services when, where, where that's appropriate. And we know that this requires investment and we have a plan to pay for it. We, politics is about priorities and we would prioritise children over the tax breaks that private schools currently enjoy. And that's how we would fund this key priority for us. Listening to uh, paediatrics uh, authorities today and they are talking about smacking and they say that smacking can cause mental health challenges for kids. I did have the minister on uh, earlier and she was saying uh, the law is fine where it is. What's Labour's view? So Labour would like to see an end to smacking and we, we recognise that um, there are different ways of achieving this and so we, you know, we're looking at that. Obviously there have been changes in Wales, there have been changes in Scotland and we're keeping that under review. Um, obviously this report today is very significant, it's serious, it's, it's important, we should listen to experts. Um, and I remember the huge debate when the smacking ban was originally brought in and the huge concerns that many people had. Parenting is hard, it's one of the hardest jobs anyone will ever have. Um, but, you know, to find clear guidance, a clear framework for parents and, and the expectations around that, I think many parents would welcome. So you would look again at the law? We, look, we would look again. We would look at how it's working in Wales and Scotland. We would look at ways in which um, any change to the law would work in practice. I've got to ask you about Angela Rayner. Um, it's um, on the front page of several newspapers today, a report suggesting that police are investigating her over her living arrangements on multiple allegations. Um, your thoughts? Well, I mean, Angela has given her thoughts very clearly on this and she welcomes the opportunity to give all of the relevant information to the relevant authorities. And I think that's the right way to go about this and the police need to do their job and look at it. Obviously, if a complaint is brought to them, they must investigate it and, and that's what must happen. But I do worry about the timing of this. We've seen this before where allegations are brought, the police are, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's demanded that they investigate. There are daily headlines and it's right ahead of local elections. And obviously, um, previously this has happened in relation to Durham and the, the matter was cleared. Angela wants this matter cleared and so she welcomes the opportunity to clarify it, but I worry about the timing of this ahead of the local elections. Problem is, she stated one thing. Uh, she said, this is where I used to live. Um, it matters because it, she was saying it was her primary residence uh, even though her kids and husband were living a mile down the road, about a mile down the road. Because it was her primary residence, she didn't have to pay capital gains tax on it. Now, I know it goes back to the 2010s, but now at least 12 police officers are having to investigate this. Her aide came out, a former aide came out at the weekend in the Sunday Times and said uh, her recollections were not the same as mine. In other words, she was suggesting that she was being economical with the actuality. Uh, and also neighbours are saying, no, that, that's not our recollection either. That's not where she lived. Look, I, I don't know the details of Angela's personal um, life arrangements and tax affairs prior to when she was elected, which is when this is relevant to, um, nor even doesn't now. doesn't matter whether it was before uh, she was elected or not, it, though, does but, it really? But these are matters for the police to look at, and, it, and, and it's right that they do their job. And Angela has welcomed it, and I think that's really important. She, she wants to be able to clarify these matters with the relevant authorities, give them all the information they need. Obviously, she took uh, legal advice. She said that clearly, that she has been told she's done nothing wrong, but she welcomes the opportunity to clarify that with the relevant police, HMRC, authorities that okay. can make these decisions. But here's the thing that puzzles me. Mm -hmm. The former top lawyer in the land, the Director of Public Prosecutions, is now her boss, and yet he has purposefully said, don't show me any of the paperwork, I don't want to see it. That's surely foolhardy. 
Look, I think this matter needs to be decided by the relevant authorities, which, um, you know, well, as you said, he's over? former director of public prosecution. Yeah, still, his current, still a his current role is, uh, you know, is, is very focused on serving the country as, as leader of the Labour Party and aspiring to be in government and turn the disastrous economic and personal circumstances that we know so many people in this country face around. That's the priority uh, for the, the Labour Party, for the leadership. And obviously, you know, Angela needs to resolve these matters with the police, and that's the right place for this uh, now to, to be focused. In the land. And the police need looking... to do their job. Yeah, but he's the former top lawyer in the land. Why is he not looking at this paperwork and saying, yeah, it's fine? I think Angela has, is more than happy... I'm asking about him, not to... her. Oh, right, OK. So what do you think? Why is he not saying, let me have a look at that paperwork, Angela. Let me have a look. Oh, yep, that's fine. Let's go out and do a joint statement and say it's absolutely fine. I've looked at it, don't know what all the fuss is about. Well, been very Because that would put it to bed, then. Keir's been very clear that he supports Angela. Without looking at the paperwork. His, his aides have looked at the paperwork, he I hasn't. understand. He's the top I lawyer in looked at the, the paperwork. Previously the top lawyer... You're, you're, you She's weren't the director of public prosecution. Legal advice, were you? and um, well, I think it's in everyone's interest that this matter is put to bed. Exactly. And, and obviously, so the why police are looking at call it. Her in the office and that will and say, resolve the Show matter. Me. Seriously, why does he not do that? Well, I mean, in terms of what the processes are and how these things are looked at, obviously, we have processes within the party where that's relevant to um, party operations. We work really hard to turn our party around and make sure that it has robust processes in place, that these matters are dealt with. But these are very personal matters for Angela in terms of her there, financial arrangements, They're in terms of her um, uh, family arrangements and their issues that um, she is more than happy to liaise with the police. She said herself, she, she wants... This is a process she welcomes. She wants to uh, clarify these matters with the relevant authorities, and the relevant authorities are the police and HMRC, and she's taken legal advice as appropriate, um, and, and, and that's how she wants this matter to be dealt with. Do you not acknowledge that to any reasonable third party, the former most senior lawyer in the country, the director of public prosecutions then, now Angela Rayner's boss, is not just saying, show me the paperwork and then I can clarify for myself that everything's fine? Look, I mean, Keir Starmer... Do you acknowledge a... that to a third party that might seem a little bit irrational? In terms of the processes uh, in place, that's not something I'm party to. Um, no, I'm I... not asking you that. I'm asking you, as a third party looking in, you've got the former top lawyer in the country who could literally just look at that paperwork and say, yeah, that's fine, and yet he chooses to distance himself. You can see why that might cause some anxiety to a third party. Look, Angela's taken legal advice, which Talking was... about him, not I her. know, which is the right thing to do. He is... Um, <sighs> he has lawyer. said very clearly... Um, but he's not acting in the capacity of a lawyer. He's acting in the capacity as leader brain. of the Labour Party, leader of the opposition... He's got a legal brain. And, uh, and, ..and a leader that's hoping to take us into government at this the next election. This is not going to go away. And uh, he, he, he has um, allowed the process to take place in that Angela's taken legal advice. She is now corresponding with the police. She's corresponding with HMRC where necessary. And um, the, the appropriate authorities will, will make these decisions. It's not a decision uh, for uh, Keir Starmer to take in terms of you you know, what, what advice? the facts of the matter are. I'd seek his advice if he was my boss. Would you not? It's not, it's not, for my, it's not a situation that I'm in. So You're representing it's Labour not today, so that's that... why I'm asking you. Would you not, in Angela's position, Angela Rayner's position, seek legal advice from a bloke who's quite clearly a top-notch lawyer? No, I have to be very clear, actually, that, you know, I'm a lawyer by background. Um, oh, it's what I did prior to, prior to entering Parliament. And I have many people, um, constituents, for example, that come to me that they would like legal advice. And, and these things need to be done in the appropriate way. Um, you know, it's not for me to give. I act in the capacity as a member of Parliament now, not as a lawyer, certainly not... Uh, a legal advisor to my constituents. And I think Keir wants to follow the appropriate processes, and so does Angela, and I think that's key. It's right that these things are done in the right way with the correct people making decisions, and she's taken independent legal advice. She's now corresponding with the police. She's more than happy to provide any information that's necessary. And, you know, I honestly think the focus on this at a time when there are so many issues uh, affecting families 
and uh, households you guys did up it and down the, the country. Hobby. And that is what Keir is focused on, and that is the right that is the right focus for him as leader of the Labour Party. That's our job. We're here to hold the government to account, and we're here to fight really hard for the people that we represent and to form a government. Yeah, let me tell you for free, it's not going to go away until he says something. But let's wait and see. It's great to see you. Thanks for taking the time to join us on the programme.